Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Baltimore, pre-service meditation. For those who may not know me or if this is your first time joining us, I'm Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson, Senior Minister of the Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Baltimore. So as we prepare for meditation, let's simply anchor to the breath. Simply noticing and feeling the inhale and the exhale. And simply going deeper with each inhalation and exhalation.
recognizing anywhere in the body at this moment where tension is coming to the surface to be released. Tension in our neck, our shoulders, our spine and back, our abdomen and core, our hips and pelvis, our legs, feet, arms, hands, where are we clenching our jaw, balling our fist, tightening the muscles that we in this moment, in this breath, can simply exhale and release. If we need to roll our neck or stretch our neck, we do so. If we need to shrug our shoulders, to release and break up the energy, we do so. If we need to stand and shake our body to release the excess tension and energy, we do so. If we are clenching our jaw, then we open our mouth, stretch our jaw, and release. Just as we release this breath, we release this tension, we release this energy of anxiety, frustration, fear, worry. We release it. We release the thoughts of can't, lack and limitation. We exhale and we surrender and we release. And with the inhale, we bring in thoughts of possibility, the energy of being, life affirming itself with this very breath. We breathe in the awareness, the knowingness of exactly what and who we are. The I and I. The infinite. The indestructible. the individualized expression of the One. We breathe understanding that there is one mind and that as our mind thinks a thought, that thought affects every mind because every mind is linked. Every mind is, in fact, the one mind individualized. So our thoughts individually affect the collective, the collective one, the collective many. Our mind shifts and changes mass consciousness. And so in this moment we elevate our thinking. We elevate the quality of our thinking. And we think more that is life affirming. More that is based in and of harmony. Joy possibility, equity, recognizing that in the same way that we breathe and that this breath involves action, it involves us surrendering to the muscles that inhale and exhale, we understand that this spiritual evolution also requires work and action.
It requires that we treat and move our feet. And so we breathe consciously recognizing that God individualizing itself in, through, and as each one of us does so, is doing so, to express itself. And so knowing that each one of us is God made flesh, spirit made flesh, life made flesh, then the entire beingness of creation, breathing itself, thinking itself, loving itself, moving itself as each one of us, that we are called to act accordingly. We are called to move accordingly. We are called to think accordingly, to speak accordingly, to feel and to move and to serve in accord with that which is our highest expression of the divine. Accepting, we breathe recognizing, we breathe life. when we do so consciously and mindfully. At any moment while washing dishes, walking the dog, cooking dinner, driving, shopping, gardening, at any moment we can bring our attention and our awareness to the breath. body temple. Where is their tension? Where is their stress? Simply breathing mindfully and becoming consciously aware at any moment brings us back into alignment, back into a coherent recognition of truth. Washing the dishes becomes a meditation. Cutting the grass becomes a meditation. Mindfully walking the dog mindfully scooping its poop Simply bringing our awareness to any action, any thought, any breath brings us back to the center, back to the core, back to the grounded awareness, I am that I am. Om Tat Sat. Aham Brahmasmi.
awaken. Awaken to the truth. Awaken to wholeness. Not as something to achieve, but as something that is. And that as we allow our consciousness to know what is, what is becomes what is for us. There is no more focusing or thinking about what someone else is, has, or does. Health is God. Wealth is God. God, wellness is God, and what is true for it must be true for each one of us, for there is only that which God is. And so we anchor in this breath to that truth, not health out there, not wealth out there, but health right here in this body, in this mind. In these words, in this energy of my heart, and in these hands that serve, health is, wealth is, power and possibility is, as within, so without. As I recognize, as we recognize, as we anchor to that which is the truth internally, and we breathe, then that internal realization, that internal recognition, that internal revelation is what is expressed externally. But we begin by anchoring to this truth. We do an internal survey. What thoughts are serving the highest and best? What emotions are serving the highest and best? What speech, what words are serving the highest and best? What actions are serving the highest and best? Am I living and demonstrating, moving and being more and more life-affirming or more and more life-denying? Do I affirm myself? Do we affirm ourselves as the infinite I am? Or do we deny our power? Do we affirm the wisdom? Or is it easier to deny? Do we affirm our health and wholeness? Or is it easier to deny? In this breath, in this moment, right here, right now, we choose anew. We choose to go up the scale of energy and awareness, more and more life-affirming. We ask the questions. We breathe the breath. We do the practice. And we breathe. And again, we think the thoughts and we breathe. We speak the words, whether typed, text, spoken, or signed, and we breathe. We feel the emotions and we breathe. We 
we engage the world by walking the walk and we breathe. Breathe in our moments of being vulnerable. We breathe in our moments of being afraid. We breathe in our moments of being frustrated. We breathe in our moments of being elated. We breathe in our moments of being in love. We breathe in our moments of being, 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 ever being more and more, I am ever being and being more, I am ever being and being more, I am that, I am, aham brahmasmi. Om Tat Sat. That which God is, I am. That which Spirit is, I am. That which joy is, I am. That which life is, I am. We breathe this truth, recognizing that this is not simply our affirmation, but that it is a declaration of truth with every breath. We declare, I am that. I am that which breathes itself. I am that which expresses itself. I am that which thinks itself into beingness. I am that which is infinite, eternal, and ever-expanding. I am that. I am. We breathe. Breathe as we anchor and come to a state of readiness, readiness for the remainder of service, readiness for the remainder of our day, readiness for that which is ours to be, to do, and to have, readiness. And so as this pre-service meditation comes to a close, we remember, we reflect on the truth that at any moment, with any breath, I am that I am. At any moment, with any breath, I am that I am. And so it is. Namaste.
thank you, and thank you. Morning, all. Good morning, all. I will get myself together this morning. I'm going to get myself together this morning. I am together this morning. All right, so. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Baltimore's virtual service. My name is Tracy Rhymes, and I am your host for today. Our awesome senior minister who led that powerful pre-service meditation is Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson, and he will deliver today's message. Rita Cordes is our practitioner on duty, and that beautiful selection you just heard was our guest musician, Felicia Taylor. Our amazing sign language interpreters are Ashley Goldman and Renika Permetla. They are assisting with making this service open, inviting, and accessible to the deaf community. Now, Rita will give our opening invocation. Good morning, everyone. Again, welcome to the Center of Spiritual Living at Greater Baltimore. Please join me in this opening prayer affirming this truth. As we gather together consciously, we are surrounded, immersed, and, in, and united by the pure Spirit of God, one divine source of abundant good. This one universal mind is expressing through us right here and right now. At this moment and every moment we choose, we are born again in spirit, and we let spirit guide and direct our thoughts and actions. As each moment passes through our everyday activities, we take advantage of resting our thoughts in calm confidence, knowing divine mind chose the higher way. We are connected to source, which leads to the clearness of mind we ask for and to the solutions for the highest and best good. We are open and receptive to accept perfect health, perfect finances, and perfect relationships and enjoying success in all our endeavors we make choices and decisions from a consciousness of divine right action. We follow our inner wisdom, which is guided by spirit. We open our hearts again and again and allow spirit within to guide the way. We ask, knowing spirit is at the end of our breath, instilling in us the answers we need, and we follow through with the stream of right thought and right action. Right here and right now, we have the kingdom of God within. We are in sync with life. We experience feelings of wonder, love, peace, empathy, kindness. We are grateful, even humble, for the privilege of experiencing how our lives flow in this process, to experience this creative process over and over again. I also express our gratitude for our senior minister, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson, for our, uh, for our administrator, Tracy Rhines, for our interpreters, and for all those involved in the technical assistance in this virtual service. 
as this is released through the law of mind. I also give thanks for the peace and love of spirit that surrounds and is within us. I let it be so. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Rita. At this time, the Center for Spiritual Living Greater Baltimore's community honors the diversity of all religions as represented by this ceremony. Baha'i is the path of unity and peace. Buddhism is the path of compassion. Christianity is the path of love and forgiveness. Confucianism is the path of deliberate tradition. Hinduism is the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. Islam is the path of submission to the will of God. Judaism is the path of living by sacred law. Native American practice is the path of indigenous spirituality. Shintoism is the path of rituals and honoring nature. Taoism is the path of ultimate reality. Unitarian Universalist is the path of social justice and sacred activism. Science of mind and spirit is the path of the divine principle of love and law. The heart represents our love for and unity with all life. I have a few announcements for you. If you have ever created a vision board or participated in a visioning session and experienced the shift in your life, then you understand the power of visioning and the impact it can have in your life. I know I do. Imagine how powerful that is when a community joins together and visions. With that in mind, today you are invited to join in the after service visioning process guided by licensed practitioner Dr. Ronnie Ellington. Stay on the Zoom call or you will be and excuse me and you will be added to the appropriate group be that visioning or prayer. Did you know that each Wednesday at noon Eastern Standard Time on the CSL Greater Baltimore's Facebook page that you can join Reverend Dr. Ray for midweek spiritual mind treatment? Well, you can. Make sure you do join them. Also, this coming Wednesday, June 10th, join the LGBTQ Plus Affinity Group event Spiritual Tapas. It is happening via Zoom and it starts at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and followed with an optional Q&A. If you have not attended, you may want to. It's a very enlightening event. June 11th, Thursday night study group, facilitated by licensed practitioner Dr. Ronnie Ellington. It's a perfect opportunity to dive deeper into the Sunday messages delivered by Reverend Dr. Ray and others. For more information, you can contact Dr. Ronnie at S-I-S-T-E-R-R-O-N-I -R -R at AOL.com. 
Make sure you put in the subject line CSLGB study group so you are not missed. And love offerings are appreciated. Movies with a message. Frank versus God. You can join for a post-movie discussion on June 20th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via Zoom. You can watch the movie on your own prior to the discussion or you can join at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the CSL Greater Baltimore's Facebook page because there will be a watch party of the film. There will be a discussion or it will be discussing and exploring such thing as why do bad things, tragedies, and etc. happen? When do you feel separated from God? And what is the role of a spiritual community? For additional information and to register, email info at cslgreaterbaltimore.org. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you receive the CSL GB newsletter each week? If not, we encourage you to do so today so you can stay informed about classes, gatherings, virtual meetings, and other life-changing happenings in your CSLGB community. Visit www.cslgreaterbaltimore.org for more information. Okay, you know the routine. Prayer works. You must say it with me. One, two, three. Prayer works. There you go. I heard y'all. We as a community continue to treat and move our feet. Knowing the truth for everyone around the planet. Practitioners are available after today's service and, and prayer requests can be sent at any time to info at cslgreaterbaltimore.org. Our musical guest is Felicia Taylor. She is a passionate singer, songwriter, and producer on a mission to deliver connection, love, and experience through song. She is a heart transplant survivor and mother of two beautiful children that encourage her to continue to give the joy of life and positivity to those that she meets. You can go to her Facebook site to, con to further connect with her at www.facebook.com slash F-E-L-I-C-I-A dot T dot Taylor dot nine. I give you Felicia Taylor.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Felicia. Oops. We have, <laughs> we have some fun today. We are. We are just having fun today. We'll just keep that. that. Dot O-R-G. <laughs> I didn't say it today. I said dot org. Now, okay, so this reader will return to lead us in a spiritual practice. It's all yours, Miss Rita. Thank you, Tracy. <clears throat> wow, that song was so beautiful and touching. First, I would like to share with you a reading from an article in the June issue of Science of Mind. It is written by Dennis Merritt Jones, entitled, The Gift Mindfulness Reveals, Opening the Window to the Miracle of All Miracles. It is under the section titled, The Miracle of Mindfulness Reveals. Master teachers have long taught that life itself is the greatest gift we have ever been given. And it is a pearl of great price. What we do with the gift is how we honor the giver. If we have eyes to see it, mindfulness elevates us in consciousness to a position of witness, to witness how the miracle of life avails itself to us every moment of every day, inviting us to embrace it fully. Our awareness of that gift is what separates us as a species from any other thing, living or not, on the planet. In his compelling book, The Living Universe, author Dwayne Elgin writes, American Indian lore speaks of three miracles. The first miracle is that anything exists at all. The second miracle is that living things exist. The third miracle is that living things exist that know they exist. As human beings conscious of ourselves, we represent the third miracle. My sense is that Ellen's words are a call for greater self-awareness collectively as a species through the practice of mindfulness. This one concept could change our world. The fact that we can think a thought or have an emotion and then mindfully step back and perceive that thought or emotion and interpret it as it floats by is profound beyond words. This is the universe offering us a glimpse of ourselves as sacred, thinking, volitional beings perhaps in a way we have never seen before. If that isn't a miracle and a mystery, I don't know what is. This is the gift mindfulness reveals. My question to you is, how are you breathing now? And now? And now? And that ends the reading. Now I invite you to relax and find a position of comfort and take a deep breath and then release it. Oh, how good it is for us to come together as one, that we just leave everything behind. We let go of the thinking mind, the physical body, and allow the breath to take its natural flow. So we just breathe gently, easily, effortlessly, allowing God's breath, or some would say spirit's breath, to flow through us. And so simply we just absolutely let go of it all and drop down into the heart. As we open it, 
we open the heart and allow ourselves to be still, to open to that stillness that we truly are, the stillness that is absolute divine intelligence, the stillness that is no thought, the stillness that is no thing, the stillness that is bliss, your bliss. And as we continue to breathe easily and effortlessly, we allow ourselves to go even deeper and deeper, the heart opening even more. And as we continue to drop down, drop down into peace, your love, divine intelligence. And just allowing us to take it deeper and deeper, breathing easily and effortlessly, staying in this moment, this moment of now. There is no other moment of now. How good it is to be still. To be still and know God. Spirit. And in this stillness, we are allow ourselves to fulfill our purpose and our dreams. We're open even more more expansion to the realm of pure spirit, divine consciousness. That is who we are. And so now we allow ourselves to let go and let God and rest. of the mind and of the body and drop into our true nature. We just continue to feel the peace, the joy, the bliss, and we know love. to know and rest in the truth. How good it is to be together in God's grace. How good it is to be together in our true nature. And how good it is to know that we can take this bliss this joy, this divine love out into our daily lives, that it never leaves us, no matter what our activity. And how good it is for each and every one of us to see and know our true selves. How good it is to see and know God to see and know spirit. For this and so much more, I am so grateful. And in bliss and love, I say thank you. I release this to the law of mind, knowing it is the truth, because it is so. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Rita.
The next voice you will hear will be that of our senior minister, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. He is going to love us, tug at our hearts, teach us, push us, challenge us, step on a toe, and or hit a hand as he delivers another powerful, thought-provoking, homework-filled message. Reverend Dr. Ray, come on and knock it out the park. Can I get an amen if we agree that Tracy is strange? Amen. Oh, yeah. I wasn't supposed to say amen. My fault. Go ahead. Do it again. Uh, no, it's fine because they already know. So, uh, whew, let's, uh, let's anchor it and breathe. Let's just breathe in appreciation for everything that's... She's adjusting camera. Breathe in appreciation for everything that we've been gifted this morning thus far gifted with amazing music, gifted with an opening in vocation, a reading in prayer, all of which are anchoring us and further grounding us and reminding us, grateful for interpreters who are providing access, grateful for technical folks who are behind the scenes making sure everything is running smoothly, just, ah, let's just breathe and be grateful. Especially since we're going into an area that is a little uncomfortable, which you'll see in a second, but just reminding that we have this opportunity at any moment when that discomfort, when that whatever it is rises, just simply come back to this breath, this gratitude for knowing that God is all there is, as Felicia said, God is all there is. Be grateful, be joyful and breathe. Ah, so, hello and welcome to June. We're still in the house pretty much because of the pandemic. Ah, June. Wow, it's already, woo, it's, it's summertime, huh? So this month, the theme is Mindfulness for Mavericks. I don't know if, and for those who are, uh, we'll say, um, of a certain age, the Maverick that we're talking about is not the television show that used to come on, just so you know. Just putting that out there because I remember that show. So, Mindfulness for Mavericks. Today we will be talking about this idea for today. Just breathe. How fitting. Just breathe. Breathing is life. It is life sustaining itself with the ebb and flow of each inhalation and exhalation. Breathing is also a method or technique that helps us to process, shift, and evolve. It is also a symbol of how both contraction and expansion can go hand in hand for life to be present. Breathe. And I would be remiss if I did not address the elephant in the room. How does one just breathe? when breath is denied to certain people. How, how, how do we talk about just breathe when life and freedom and love are denied to some people? Just breathe? Really? How, how do we just breathe when a just breath is being denied? When someone is not permitted to breathe? When they say, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. That just breath, the breath that is their divine right, is being stifled, being suppressed, being choked out of them. It's rather challenging to just breathe when a just breath is denied to one of our brothers, our sisters, our gender-rich cousins and family and siblings. And yet, even though the elephant is in the room, it is ours to determine, what does this mean for me? What does this mean for my community? What does this mean for my center? Because if we are going to move forward, 
then it begins with each one of us doing our work. If we are going to move forward, because pandemic being done, when it reaches that point that we officially say it's done, there is no going back to what was before then. There is no going back to the America pre-George Floyd, pre Breonna Taylor. There is no going back to the America pre Ahmaud Arbery. There is no going back to the America of Rodney King, Trayvon Martin. There is no going back to that America. We are now at a critical juncture in history. It's the Pettus Bridge moment where not only are we awakening, but the world is awakened and watching what is going on. Are we ready to turn the swords of racism and war and lack and scarcity and xenophobia, are we ready to turn those swords into plowshares that we now plow the rich and fertile fields of life that we may feed, nurture, and nourish all of creation. The way forward is chosen now, in this breath, in this moment, in this asking, what is mine to do? Derek Rydell in the book Emergence says, please hear this. We will never solve our problems in any sustainable way doing things the way we've done them or being the people we've been. Breathe. We must evolve. The only way to evolve is to go to a higher level. And the only way to go to a higher level is to access the evolutionary impulse beyond the conditioned mind and its endless tales. Because the conditioned mind can only create another version of its current condition. Are we ready to move forward at a higher level? Are we ready to shift the conditioned mind to a new state, a new way of being? Are we ready to release what has been to a new level of sustainability in a world that works for all? Are we ready? Because if we are, then it requires work. It requires a level of mindfulness. It requires a level of what it means for us to be mavericks. Ah, but if I were to ask you, what does that even mean? If I were to ask you, mindfulness, we pretty much, pretty much everybody's got Tracy's shaking her head like, I don't know, I don't know. Mindfulness. We've read enough books or read enough magazines about Buddhism and mindfulness. We've seen the covers of books. Mindfulness for mamas and mindfulness for papas and mindfulness for employers and mindfulness for... We, 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 we know it's out there. It's everywhere, pretty much. But Maverick? Let's, let's dive a little deeper first, though. For those who may not know, mindfulness is the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. It is a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment. How many times do we allow our attention to go into, oh, wait, no, wait a minute, so tomorrow I've got, oh, shoot, i got a meeting today at noon. Wow, okay, okay, so wait, wait, wait. So today at noon, and then, but what's going on right now? Like, we are so forward-focused, or so, remember when I was 10, and, like, remember that day I fell off my bike because you pushed me? You know that's why I've never forgiven you. Like we are so forward or backward focused that we're not mindful in the present. Our mind is not full in the present moment. Well. While calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and the body sensations. Where do I feel tension? Where do I feel a heat? Where, Tracy, hot flash, heat's all over. But where do I, in the moment of being forward, backward focused, where do I feel tension? Where do I feel butterflies? Where do I feel anger? Being aware of those bodily sensations. And it is also used as a therapeutic technique. That's mindfulness. Maverick. An unorthodox or independent-minded person. Synonyms, and this is where we're going, synonyms. Trendsetter, rebel, nonconformist. Ah, okay. So a trendsetter, what is a trendsetter? A trendsetter, a person who leads the way in fashion or ideas. 
No, Tracy, that's not that's not fashion. Sit down, boo boo. That's not fashion. I wish y'all could see this, but it's okay. Who leads the way? in fashion or ideas. But let's talk about fashion, because fashion is not just what you wear. Fashionable, characteristic of and influenced by or representing a current or popular trend or style. Is it fashionable to manifest a world that works for all? Is it fashionable to recognize that God is all there is? Is it setting a new trend to let love lead the way. Is that where we're moving from, this idea? If we are, then we may be able to claim the title of maverick for ourselves. But if we're not doing this, if we are conforming to the way things have always been, for example, I recently shared a post about a senior lesbian young woman of color who was denied the opportunity to walk across the stage at her high school graduation because she wore pants. Not only that, they put her out of the school or whatever, she had to watch graduation from behind the fence. But when it got to her name, they wouldn't even say her name. The reason being, pants is not, it's, it's a direct uh, dress code violation. And what they said was, well, this has been our dress code for the last 20 years. The way things have been do not need to always be the way things are. She was denied a critical experience in her life that she worked for because she wore pants in the year 2020. We're denying women the right to walk across the stage and get a diploma because she wore pants? That's the antithesis of being both mindful or a maverick. That's being a slave to an old paradigm and an old consciousness that is outdated, that decides and determines and dominates how other people will live and experience their lives. We want that to change? Because if we want it to change, then it's time for us to now come up with unorthodox ways of thinking, meaning think outside the box. We, we've done fossil fuels long enough. Time to think outside the box and come up with other ways of fueling vehicles and machinery where we are not polluting the atmosphere. Time to come up with ways to govern and protect a society where the police are not a, a, a bullying form of the military but rather a group of people who understand what it means to protect and to serve, and they do so. An unorthodox way of showing up, where we are setting the trend for a world that works for all. Are we ready for that? Are we willing to do the work for that? Alan Rickman says, Maverick is a word which appeals to me more than misfit. Maverick is active. Misfit, passive. Mavericks get up and do. They walk the walk. They don't just sit by and observe as other people do the work. They don't sit there as armchair bandits typing and saying what other people should or shouldn't be doing. They don't dictate. They don't criticize without being willing to also do the work. Mavericks lead. Even when there are times to follow, a maverick follows one who is leading from a place, a consciousness of being a mindful maverick. And we breathe. Because we're getting ready to go to science class for a moment. Come on. Physics 101. What's that got to do with us? Well, like physics 101. It. If you want to go higher, if you want to go higher, you must build not only an effective base, foundation, but an effective center. 
We know this from physics and architecture, but we don't seem to apply it when it comes to education, sociology, politics, etc., let alone spirituality. We know from architecture, in building structures, in building skyscrapers, that it gets to a point where you can go but so high with the foundation that eventually you have to build the foundation, but also a core structure that holds, pulls the building in. So you build not just the foundation, but a strong, aligned core as well. But why? Why, why is that important? Because when the structure goes up, gravity is pulling it. And if it doesn't have a strong foundation, and it doesn't have a strong core, then it's going to crumble. The heavier the building, the greater the pressure on its foundation. Winds. Did you know that tall buildings actually sway? And if they're not built in a way that allows for that, they are going to topple? The lateral force results in gradual increasing deflection. So the foundation and the core must also be built in a way where when the winds of change hit, we are able to bend with, to yield and come back, rather than the winds of change topple us over. And the winds of change could be anything. The winds of change could be you found out that your mom was on the floor in her bedroom for two days, and then the paramedics were called, and then she went to the hospital, and then she was placed into a nursing home. Like, that could be what you found out, like I found out a couple of weeks ago. If I'm not strong in my core and not strong at my base, then when those winds of change hit me, hit us, we bend, but we don't break. We ebb and flow. We are like bamboo in the wind. And then there are the times when the earth quakes beneath us. And once again, shaking, off, shaking often creates undulating motion. There are buildings in key areas, such as Japan, where there are lots of earthquakes, and the buildings are made specifically to be able to shake with the earth. How many of us have an earth-shaking, an earth-quaking experience that oftentimes knocks us to our feet? And for some, it keeps us there. Knocks us to our knees, sorry. And for some of us, it keeps us there. But if we build a strong foundation and a strong core, then even when the earth quakes, we move, but we remain. We may shake, we may tremble, but we remain. I'm sure you've heard the quote, and I don't remember off the top of my head right now who said it, but if you must speak truth to power, and you are afraid, then speak it even if your voice trembles. Speak it. If you must stand for this new way of being in the world, and your knees shake, then grab hold of someone and let your knees shake. But stand anyway. If your foundation and your core are ready, are strong and are stable, we can withstand anything and everything that it will call us to be, to step into an evolved and higher way of showing up that a world that works for all is what we manifest. Thich Nhat Hanh, in Stepping Into Freedom, said, Feelings come and go like clouds in a windy sky. Conscious breathing is my anchor. At any given moment throughout the day, check your breathing and ask, Am I breathing from my chest? Am I breathing from my abdomen? Am I breathing into the tension and the stress and the fear and the anxiety and the trauma and the angst? <sighs> or am I breathing into the expansive freedom of recognizing the thoughts are there, but I need not focus on or follow them. I can focus on this breath and this choice and this thought as I move forward into a new evolved way of being. Most of the time we don't consciously breathe though. We just breathe because <clears throat> the body knows how to breathe. So we just breathe. But we don't ever really stop to say
Because the moment we anchor and breathe to that, we are strengthening our core. Physically strengthening our core. Emotionally strengthening our core. And spiritually strengthening our core. Because we are bringing our awareness to that truth of our being. And the breath is that reminder. So we're invited. Breathe consciously. In Japan, in the martial arts, you know, there's this concept called hara. Raise your hand, anybody who's on uh, Zoom, or if you're in Facebook, type in the chat. If you know what hara, if you know what that word means, I'm going to give you a, just a millisecond, just a pause. Don't Google it, don't look it up. Don't cheat, don't cheat, don't cheat. So hara, hara is where and how you breathe. So in all forms of Budo, the, war, the way of the warrior in Japan, and in Chinese martial arts, it's called the Tantien. It is that place of your body where your center of gravity is. And so you breathe from your abdomen. And specifically, it's considered to be two or three inches below your navel. It is the core center of what holds you steady. Your hara is also where and how you move. So when life happens, where and how are you breathing? When you are watching a video of a police officer murdering a man, where and how do you breathe? When you are called into action, where and how do you move? Do you move into peacefully protesting? Do you move into looting? Do you move into voting? Do you move into prayer? Do you move into sending an email or a phone call to a governor or a mayor. Do you move into... How do you move? Where do you move from? How do you breathe and where do you breathe from? What is your center? Because whenever we're moving, because we're always breathing, are we doing so consciously? Are we doing so with purpose, with vision, on a mission, as someone who is aligned, as someone who is in a resonance with the very divine nature of being, is that where I am breathing from? Not breathing simply as a process of take air in, put carbon dioxide, I just breathe in, I breathe out, I breathe in, I breathe out, that's all I'm doing, I'm just breathing. No, you are breathing as spirit is breathing itself as you. Do you breathe from that? Is that how you breathe? Is that where you breathe from? I breathe from the awareness of God as my beingness. Recognizing that when this body sheds and is no longer of use, that that which I am as infinite eternal spirit must in some way continue to breathe. Whatever that means is whatever that means. But if God is infinite, eternal, and ever-expanding, and God cannot die, and that which I am is what it is, then that, what we call breath, in some way, must continue. Because spirit continues. How am I moving? Am I moving as God? Am I moving from this awareness that this is the truth of my being? You know, we get caught up on words a lot. A lot. You've heard me, if you've ever listened to me before, you've heard me talk about, I don't do positive and negative as if negative is bad. Because negative is not bad. We talk about positive thinking, think positive. But you do know that you can think negatively, and negatively is a positive. You get what I just did there? You get when a negative is a positive, because in algebra you know a negative times a negative equals a positive. Doo -doo -doo. So what I'm saying is that thinking negatively is when I'm anchoring into the darkness, when I'm anchoring into the soil, when I'm anchoring into the feminine energy, when I'm anchoring into the yin, then I'm thinking negative. I'm thinking intuition. I'm thinking the yin aspect of yin and yang. So, then what does it mean? Am I thinking what is life-affirming or what's not life-affirming? Not positive and negative, because positive and negative is life-affirming if balanced and coming from this understanding. 
Same thing with this idea of breathing. Because we get caught up in this whole idea of contracting is bad. Withdrawing is bad. It's not, it's not effective. But, but it is if done from a higher state of consciousness or awareness. It is. First of all, that's expansion. When we inhale, the lungs expand. The lungs increase volume. The rib cage expands. The diaphragm contracts. So in the breath, there is both expansion and contraction on the inhale, both together in one action. Contraction, the process in which a muscle becomes or is made shorter or tighter, tense, flexed, decreased. It is also a shortening of the uterine muscles occurring at intervals between and during childbirth. The contractions are getting closer. So something is about to be born. Sometimes when we are in the state of contraction, it's recognizing that this is not a bad thing, but rather a birthing opportunity. Is it an opportunity for something to expand as my diaphragm contracts, my lungs expand, my volume of oxygen increases? It can be a great thing. Retraction, the action of drawing something back or within. So when I expire, when I exhale, the lungs, the volume decreases, the rib cage retracts, the diaphragm relaxes and moves up, air pressure increases. So when lung volume decreases, air pressure increases. Hmm, interesting concept. Once again, yin and yang, both actions happening at the same time, in the same breath. When someone offers you a gift, their arm is expanding. It's reaching. And if I am going to receive it, then I reach as well. I expand. The muscles expand to receive and then contract to bring it to me. We already do this stuff. But we don't apply it in a way that applies to our spiritual lives, our spiritual practices, in a way that makes us evolve and step into a greater way of being. We like Tupperware spirituality where this applies to this, this applies to that, and that applies to that. And if none of it applies to my spirituality. But it does. You're, you are spirit. You are life itself. It's not possible to be devoid of that, ever. You can choose to ignore it, but ignoring it doesn't change it. You can choose to deny it, but denying it doesn't change it. It just prohibits you from making full access of all that you are and all that what God is as you is expressing or could express in through and as you. So when we are tempted to withdraw, ask, am I doing so out of fear? Or am I doing so, so that yin and yang, that I am moving so that I can pause, so that I can take in, so that I can observe, so that when I have observed and taken in, I am now ready to move forward and act. Tai Chi, in and out. Breath, in and out. It's all one, yin and yang, to such a point that it's not yin and yang, it's yin yang. It's only one. And as a maverick who is mindful, we are asked to live, move, and have our beingness from this state of awareness. Ernest Holmes says in the Holmes papers, the Ernest Holmes papers, the ideas of power, the universe is self-existent. And God comes new and fresh in the perennial springtime of every moment. Every moment, new. Every moment, new. Every moment, new. Every moment, new. Bursting forth from the timeless infinite into the present, present incident, carrying with the wonder, the majesty, and the might 
and the warmth and color of the eternal itself. In every moment, God is present. Every moment, all that God is must also be fully present. In every moment. Mindfully being aware of this moment is rich and ripe with wonder and majesty and power and possibility. Every moment, breathe into it. Every moment, breathe into it. Every moment, breathe from it. Every moment, move from it. Every moment, God is. Holmes goes on to say, such is the nature of our being. Every day is a new beginning. Every breath is a new beginning. Every thought is a new beginning. Every service is a new beginning. Every prayer is a new beginning. Every song is a new beginning. Every moment new. Every day is the world made new. How are, how are you? How am I? How are we? Today, making it new. What new thing are we bringing, birthing into this experience today? Or is today going to just be like any other Sunday? Is today going to be just like any other after service what I do? During service what I do? During the week, same old, same old, business as usual, Come see, come saw, all the same, it's just the, the, the teeter-totter, merry-go-round, hamster wheel. Or are we going to consciously set a new trend, consciously be more fashionable as one walking as an evolved thinker, a thought leader, a maverick, who is ready, willing, and able to change the surface of creation. I don't know how many of you are fans of Frank Herbert and Dune, but there's a scene in Dune where uh, Paul Atreides, Muad'Dib, the Kwisatz Haderach, the Messiah, changes the very face of Arrakis. A desert planet. Dune. A desert planet. And he makes it rain. When he knows who and what he is, he knows, he anchors, and he changes the very face of the planet. Every single one of us is the Kwisatz Haderach. Every single one of us is the Christ. Every single one of us is the Buddha. Every single one of us is the infinite I am. Om Tat Sat. I am that I am. But are we living from that awareness? Are we thinking from that awareness? Are we speaking and communicating from that awareness? Are we feeling emotions from that awareness? Are we walking the walk from that awareness? Ah, so we breathe. Just breathe a just breath. Recognizing that at any moment, at any time, we get to change. We get to let go of the old to ever step into the new. In any moment, and every moment, that opportunity is there. This week, your homework, your call to action, ask yourself, when I am confronted with challenges, trauma, conflict, what do I tend to do? Is it moving me forward? Whatever it is that I do, is it moving me forward? Meaning, is it moving me into that which is more life-affirming? If not, do I know how to change it? If so, am I changing it? And if not, am I going to seek the assistance needed to change it? Am I going to go to counseling or therapy? Am I going to 
get a practitioner to work with me with sessions or prayer? Am I going to reach out to a minister or my senior minister? Am I going to reach out to a friend who is trusted? Am I going to work through the idea of archetypes? Am I going to... I don't care if you use tarot cards. Are you going to do something that is new and different that is going to anchor you into some different level or realm of experience. Change it up. And if it means that, then do that. Till you get to the point where you don't even need them. Like, I don't, at this point, I don't care. Because we know that right now, the world is not working. Right now, we know that there are people out there instigating a new civil war. We know they're there. They're posting things on Facebook and Twitter to instigate, to anger people. And if we do not step forward and be the new trendsetters, the fashionable ones who know that mindfulness is fashionable, evolution is fashionable, love and unity are fashionable, eradicating racism is fashionable. If we are not willing to move into that space and be vulnerable to move into that space, then we're giving them the space. So do what is needed of us to change. Do what is needed of us to step into a new way of being. And then daily, what is or could be my practice of emerging, evolving, and expanding? Daily, what is my practice or what could be my practice to emerge, evolve, and expand. Daily, what is my practice to make sure that I am ever birthing something new, ever visioning something new, ever being something more, something greater, something that is in the direct alignment with what I know God to be. Every day, what am I doing or could I be doing? In what ways do I or can I mindfully and consciously lay the foundation and the center and the core for conscious li- oops, sorry, for my living, moving, and being a maverick in my life, my family, my community, my spiritual community, and the world? What can I do to be more mindful, more conscious, and lay the foundation and have a stronger core that I may step into living, moving, and having my beingness as a maverick in my life, my home, my community, my spiritual community, and the world. Daily, what can I do? And we breathe. First, I will speak our affirmation for the day, and then if you feel so inclined, so aligned, then I ask that you say it out loud, along with me. First time. I breathe mindfully that I may intend, speak, and act as a spiritual maverick, doing what is mine to do, manifesting a world that works for all. Together. I breathe mindfully that I may intend, speak, and act as a spiritual maverick, doing what is mine to do, Manifesting a world that works for all. And we breathe. Simply letting that ground and letting that sink in as we prepare to enjoy the wonderful music, the beautiful sound of the higher vibration of this gift of music that Felicia is now about to offer us. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you, community. Thank you, God. And so it is. Broken down and tired Living life on a merry-go-round And you I see a fire I see it in you so we can work it out Ooh, mountain We can work it out
If I need to do it a thousand times today, I'm going to do it a thousand times today. Ah, and we breathe. We breathe in gratitude, bringing that gratitude into the wonderful practice that we know to be offering, conscious giving, tithing. We breathe recognizing and appreciating the fact that right now we have three ways that we can invest in our spiritual community, invest where we are spiritually fed. We can do so via PayPal. We can do so via text messaging. We can do so via sending a check or money order in the mail. And this and more information can be found at our website at www.cslgreaterbaltimore.org slash giving. Ah, and we breathe. We breathe recognizing that this thing called tithing, conscious giving, is what is helping, what is transforming, what is laying the foundation and the very core of what it means to be in spiritual community, what it means for CSL Greater Baltimore to be a beloved community that is transforming the Greater Baltimore area. We breathe into that knowing that our time, our tithes, our treasure, our talents, all of this is going into coming from that source that is never depleted, that awareness that is never run dry, and knowing that that which it is, is what we are. Breathing and preparing for our declaration, our prosperity declaration, together, are you ready? Ready! I don't know why she said it that way, but come on, let's go. I joyfully, consciously, and gratefully participate in the law of circulation. I trust in the spiritual principle that says, as I sow into my beloved community, I demonstrate my awareness of standing not only in the flow, but as the flow itself. As I sow of myself, my time, my treasure, my talent, I demonstrate my support and engagement in my community's vision, mission, and purpose. I actively give as a demonstration of manifesting, of reaping the harvest of a world that works for all. You know, pause for a second, because this idea just hit me in my head when I read the word circulation. But you know how we talked about the lungs and they expand and contract? The heart does the exact same thing. Like, we're, there is no circulation of blood if the heart doesn't expand and contract and expand and contract. The very heartbeat is expanding and contracting. Our breathing is expanding and contracting. Our lives are expanding and contracting. Where are we being asked to withdraw our attention and our energy that we may now expand it in other places, other ways. Simply anchoring and breathing, knowing that we are right where we need to be because God is ever-present in every thought, in every word, in every action, in every feeling. It's all there is. It's all we are. Now, this is a new slide for y'all. And I've added this because Part of being a trendsetter, part of being fashionable in what this thing called CSL is, requires us to know what it is. It requires us to know what religious science is and science of mind and spirit. It requires us to know that so that when we are out in the world, we know who we are, we know what we are, and that when we are asked, we know what we're saying. We know that religious science or science of mind, and yes, I... Partially, I was jesting about the tarot cards. Yeah, I was throwing that out there because there's this level of exasperation where I'm like, look, it's time for us to do the work. And if you need to do that, then do it. But yes, that is not science of mind. That is not religious science. That is not new thought. Right? So we know this. Neither is aliens who are responsible for racism and sexism and homophobia. Neither is it any form of anti-Semitism or Islamophobia, etc. Like, that's not who we are. So who are we, you ask? Religious science, also known as science of mind, and now currently referred to as Centers for Spiritual Living, is a spiritual philosophy applicable for each person. It is a synthesis, key thing, this is the thing, it is a synthesis based on the truth which arises in every culture 
in the form of science, philosophy, and religion. It is viewed and practiced as a source of wisdom for revealing the truth about the seemingly unknown forces that shape our universe. It enables us to participate in active and conscious ways in our own lives as co-creators of the divine to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence. Ah, that's who we are. That's why we're here. That's what we do. So, it's that time of service when I'm so glad we had this time together Together Just to have a laugh or sing a song A song Seems we just get started, started And before you know it What happens? Comes the time we have to say So long So, as you go out into the rest of your day Go knowingly, go mindfully, go as the maverick that we are. Like step out there and know that you get to set the trend of what it means to not only be awesome, but leave the scent of awesomeness everywhere you go. Well, To leave the very vibration of magnificence and awesomeness on everything you touch. Come on. Like you have that. It's what you are. You are calling it forth in every tree that you pass. Mm -hmm. The energy of the tree sees namaste. That which God is as you walking by is the same God that I am. As I open from the bottom with my roots sinking in. As my leaves raise up and draw in oxygen, carbon dioxide, and, and, and sunlight. Like it's all photosynthesis. It's all God and it's all good. Ah, and no, they don't breathe in oxygen. That was a slip of the tongue. Trees give off oxygen. You knew that. Messing ah. with me. Ah. You know how I get when I get excited and riled up. How you get? Ah. How you get? Yeah, because you know. What? The silliness comes out. Woo! Ah. Come on. So, in a few moments, Dr. Ronnie will be leading us in visioning. So, if you are staying for visioning, stay on. If you want prayer... If you can, type into the chat box that you are staying on specifically for prayer and you will be put you get you get it. What? You will be put in a breakout room. Say it again. You will be put in a breakout room with a practitioner for prayer. Let us know that that's what you're here for. Otherwise, go ahead and log off. Have an amazing day. Recognizing in this moment God to be all there is. Maybe. Recognizing in this moment that we will rise up. That we are rising up to a new level of awareness. We are rising up in support of this breath. Rising up in support of who and what we are as a beloved community. Rising up as a community, as a country, as a planet where racism no longer is, where sexism no longer is, where xenophobia no longer is, where that consciousness and that paradigm has outlived its need to be and it dies out. It is eradicated and removed and now it is fashionable to walk the walk of love. It is fashionable to talk the talk of oneness and unity. It is the new trend to live in a world that works for all. This is, and it is right now, and so it is. Namaste and, and so amen. It is. Namaste and Be well, amen. be blessed. Chat with you soon. Chat with you soon.